Now that we've gotten comfortable with the test runner, let's dig into some advanced usage of the tool. Out of the box, there are several command line overrides you can use to customize your test runs on a case-by-case -case basis. Let's take a look at a couple of these. Overriding the base URL can be helpful for times when you need to test the same site on a different server. Most often this occurs when you're testing a server on your local computer versus the production server copy. We're going to give this a shot by testing a copy of the robot parts shop that's available on a public URL. We'll start the WDIO command as normal, but add a base URL argument at the end to override the URL used in our tests. As you can see, it tested against the public URL instead of the local IP address. This is exactly what we wanted. If we were to run the test again without the base URL option, it would go back to using the IP address of our local machine. Let's take a look at another option. I mentioned the log level a few videos ago. Sometimes when you're debugging your tests, it helps to see the logs that WebDriver IO outputs. Running our WebDriver IO command with the base URL option, we can add a second option which sets the log level to verbose. When we run our test, we can see the output as the test is executed with our test success message at the very end. Let's take a brief detour to walk through the activity here. The first thing WebDriver IO does is ask Selenium for a browser to use. These are called sessions, and to get one, WebDriver IO sends a POST request with the data to the session endpoint on the Selenium server. The Selenium server receives this request and initializes the session with the provided data. You'll notice this matches our capability setting in our config file, but has many more options specified. These are the WebDriver IO defaults used to start a normal browser session. We could override them via the capabilities object in our config file if we so desired, but we don't right now, so we'll leave them be. The next thing to occur is that we receive a result back from Selenium. This result contains all the relevant data about our new session, including a session ID that WebDriver IO logs out separately for easier debugging. This session ID is used in all of our future requests to identify which browser session we're using. Understanding the relationship between WebDriver IO and Selenium is helpful, so I want to take a little bit of extra time to review it. WebDriver IO doesn't actually run the browser automation, Selenium takes care of all of that. What WebDriver IO does provide is a JavaScript interface for sending commands to Selenium for it to run. It does this through REST API calls, which means that it sends an HTTP request to specific endpoints on the Selenium server. Basically, WebDriver IO and Selenium have a common language they share to send data back and forth. WebDriver IO sends commands to Selenium for it to run, then Selenium sends the results of those commands back. Take the next command, for example. WebDriver IO sends a request to the Selenium hub at the wd slash hub slash session ID slash URL endpoint. In the request, it passes along information about the URL for the browser to go to. After Selenium receives and processes this request, it returns the results of the command execution. In this case, there's no information to pass back, so the results are null. In the next command, we request the page title from the browser. We don't send any data to Selenium, as there isn't any information to send. Instead, Selenium returns data back to us, namely, the title of the page. You see this in the result log output, and sequentially, the console output we sent in our test. The next part of our test is clicking the call to action button. In our script, this is only one command, but WebDriver IO has to send two requests to Selenium to make the action happen. The first thing it does is find the element on the page. You can see it hits the element endpoint, passing in the selector data. Selenium will then return the ID for the element we requested. With this ID, WebDriver IO sends a second command, click, to the endpoint with that specific element ID. That completes the click action. The fact that WebDriver IO helps simplify two commands down to a single one is a great benefit of the tool. We'll take a look in a couple of lessons at how we can create our own custom commands for a similar purpose. The next several actions are similar to the first title grab, where we're asking for the title and URL of the page and then logging the result. Finally, WebDriver IO closes our browser by sending a delete request for our session endpoint. With that, the test is complete. The last thing we'll cover in this video is the ability to create our own custom arguments. To do this, we'll be using some temporary environmental variables when running our script. I talked about sending in a custom base URL for a different server environment. What if we're going to be doing this often and want to avoid typing out the entire URL every time we run the command? 
it's actually a pretty simple thing to do. The first step is to move the base URL value to a variable. For simplicity's sake, we'll name this variable base URL. We then update the config object to point to that variable. Now that we have that set up, we can create a conditional that checks a server flag in our environmental variables. Node allows you to access all of your environmental variables through the process.env object. If server is set to prod, we'll update the base URL variable to use the production URL. That's all the changes we need to make in our config file for this to work. Back on the command line, we need to temporarily set the environmental variable for the server property. Again, this is a simple feat. Instead of passing in the value as an argument to the WDIO command, we set the variable first by typing server equals prod. After that, we call our WDIO command. Note that in Windows, you need to use the set keyword for it to work. Let's run this to see if it passes muster. As hoped for, the URL gets updated to the prod server. This sort of customization is really helpful when working on larger teams with multiple environments, especially when you want to make it easier for other folks to run the test without having to know the specific URLs. Speaking of making things easier for others, in the next video of this lesson, we'll take a look at using NPM scripts to simplify the command used to run our test suite.